Hi all. I just came back from um, a club match. Barnet were playing Watford 1. As you may recall, we played Watford 2 last week and we got hammered by their second team. Our first team, Barnet, um, we lost 4-1. So now playing their first team, uh, which is an even stronger team, and unfortunately we were one player short. So um, although we lost the match, we only lost by 3-2. So um, Alex Eflontis, he drew on board 1 against their 2-15. Um, uh, Mike Jones um, drew with uh, their 170 on board 4. So they had a very strong team. Um, David um, Hottam, he um, he lost though um, to uh, Holland, Eddie Holland. So I was playing Andrew Stone and I played E4 and he played the French and I thought I'd try this system which um, the two FMs played against me when, when I played the French, just Knight C3 and to my um, pleasant surprise, instead of you know, Andrew playing the winner at bishop b4, he played knight f6 as I would play it. So since I've been on the black side of this twice now, I played bishop g5 myself. And um, he didn't play the variation with uh, d takes, knight takes, bishop e7. He played actually uh, bishop e7 here. And I seem to remember uh, an interesting video by Maginot in this um, line in the French, the Alakine Chattard attack. Actually, I might not have pronounced that um, uh, quite correctly. I apologise for that. Um, that sounds a bit rude. But anyway, this, this, um, it's a gambit against the French. You play e5 here, and this is logically going to weaken the dark squares in, in black's position if you can exchange off your dark squared bishop for black's dark squared bishop. But now h4. So not only, you know, wanting this exchange of bishops, but also this semi-open, you know, h file could be dangerous. Um, but he didn't accept the gambit. He played knight c6, which seems to be a safe, solid move. However, I think there's something positionally suspect about it. You know, not making any effort to have the classical undermining strategy against d4. So it might be positionally slow if white just tries to play this gambit uh, with the idea of clamping down on black's counterplay. And as we'll see, I missed an opportunity to do that because, um, you know, I thought I had to gamut the pawn. But actually, the pawn can be used positionally. And I'll show you how. After knight h3, he played h6. So I took on e7. And I noticed, you know, there's an immediate threat here of queen b4. You know, hitting d4 justifying the knight c6 in this position. And also hitting b2. So what I did here... Um, was actually to um, to play queen d2. So if queen b4 then castles queen side. Um, now, if uh, black takes here, actually Ribka thinks white's okay in this particular position. Um, so let's see why. Castles. Now, if black is forced to castle king side, because to castle queen side, he'd have to move his knight and play bishop d7. Um, well, let's see, well, you know, why can't black try and castle queenside? Um, so bishop b5, so bishop d7. Now here there's a killer tactical move, which shows, you know, black can't be too complacent. Knight g5, so hitting that queen and using that pin on this unprotected piece. So black can't play queen takes g5. Queen g4, f3, queen f5. Now bishop d3. Um, so forcing knight c4 because the queen's uh, trapped. Bishop f5, knight d2. This is a bit of a long variation. Rook takes, e takes. Knight takes d5, advantage to white. So I didn't see any of that. I just thought I'd mention it. So basically, in this position, um, black to castle queenside needs um, to have quite a few moves. Now say the queen went to e7 here. Knight f4. Again, why can't bishop d7 be played, you might be wondering. Well, maybe knight h5 here, Ripka gives. So if rook g8, rook h3, castles. And I think black's surviving this now. It's about equal. So so anyway, this didn't happen in the game. I, I fully gambited that pawn um, by, after knight b6, you know, he's also going to castle queenside. But um, I thought... Um, 
I provoke a weakness on the queen side. But here, actually, let's look at, in this particular position, Rivka thinks white's fine here, believe it or not, without sacrificing h4. So this is how the h4 pawn can be used uh, positionally. Rivka gives knight f4, and if, you know, say, um, bishop d7, then just castles, and if black castles, um, king b1, king b8, and now I think, you know, h5 features as, as a move which, um, you know, with advantage to white. So what's happened here is positionally, you know, all the breaks have been clamped down on. You know, this is not playable, this is not playable, there's no pressure on, on d4. But on the other hand, you know, what is um, white's plan here? I'll just, just following this on to, just get, um, to get a clue what, what the computer must be thinking here, if there is any white plan. I think it's just dark square and clamping down on, on black's options. A little bit of pressure. Queen g3. I mean, no, I, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't know about this. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be restricting black's options as a positional gambit. But, no, so so basically I, I gambited the pawn. Uh, well, I ended up gambiting pawn. I first played knight b5, though, to try and provoke a6. And Ribka doesn't like this at all, this manoeuvre. So black's actually better now, especially taking the pawn. Castle, bishop d7. Now c3. So, um, you know, I was, you know, hoping that maybe if, if Castle's queenside, I've got some ideas, you know, later of knight c2, uh, you know, and maybe, you know, even b4 and b5. I'm trying to use this a6 pawn as an excuse to open a lineup. Um, so he castled. But um, after bishop d3, he plays queen e7. I now play knight f4. And I'm starting to form another plan here, nothing to do with his king, just to do with another potential, you know, trump card um, that I've got here, which is this, this pawn wedge. And, you know, I had another successful game in the season with this pawn chain. In fact, I think at least two of this pawn chain, um, because I like playing for f4, f5. And we'll see now that that was my kind of strategic plan to sort of leverage this trump card further, just to play for that... Um, you know, that roller on the king side. But first, queen e2. And I did have the tactical idea of trying to respond to c5 with bishop a6. But apparently, this, this is no good, this bishop a6 here. Because I thought it would be winning one of these knights. But he's got a hatchy here, bishop a4. And black ends up better. This is a variation which I, I checked out um, a few minutes ago. Uh, so white sacks the exchange, queen b5. And apparently... Um, Black hands up better because the queen is able to to defend b7. So there was a there was a point behind this computer move, bishop d7. It's getting the queen involved in, in defence. Um, so basically, uh, he missed the opportunity maybe for a quick, you know, c5 here, liberating his position. Instead, he managed to play this move, which gives me the advantage according to Ripker. It's, it's actually positioning. It's removing my worst piece. That drunken knight on the queen side can at least exchange off.